connections are valuable no matter what the tenure of them, no matter how you meet great people, whatever that is, connection is powerful. So Debbie Roraba is in the house from Court Furniture. Debbie, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. You have just keep showing up and showing up and showing up. You have such a growth mindset, Debbie. Where does that come from for you? I'm going to guess I'm going to try. I keep trying to have a growth mindset. And I, I think the more <laughs> I read and learn about it, it it's really, you, you can have it in one area, but maybe not in another, which, which is interesting. And, and it's a lot of self-reflection sometimes when you find yourself kind of stuck in a a rut. He's, I got to rethink whether this is an area where I don't have a growth mindset. But, you know, for me, it's um, probably always been just growing up. I always felt like, you know, if I wanted to have a different outcome or different future that I could control it or influence it in some way, shape or form. So if I didn't like my circumstances, I, I figured a way around it. Mm-hmm. And you've done a lot of figuring over the years. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't think my parents were really happy about uh, some I didn't sneak out at night but my my parents growing up I'm a little bit older and it was always having to wear dresses or skirts to school through through junior high and so I would throw a pair of jeans out the window and <laughs> <laughs> I'd go around the corner like I was walking to school and I sneak up the neighbor's side and come pick up my jeans and go to school and change into them. <laughs> so <laughs> and then would you leave your would you leave your skirt like in your backpack or something and then change before you left school or when you crept back home I didn't need to worry about that because mom and dad worked so uh, they weren't home when I got home so okay right. <laughs> and they didn't have video cameras right nowadays they couldn't do that because there's video ring doorbells and everything else that have been busted so <laughs> <laughs> and isn't that a nice hearkening back uh, and I, don't, I know you're not uh, looking in the rearview mirror. You're looking forward. At the same time, it's always interesting to reflect. Like, where, where, where was that? Who were we? Yeah. And how did we get to this point? Which is a really big question. That's probably a, a couple of glasses of something. Yeah. Uh, some point. But you have Im- impressed me from the beginnings of our relationship, Debbie. That you are growth minded, because <laughs> there are a lot of people who are not. Um, one thing that I love talking with you about, whether it's sitting on the deck at the Gaylord in Maryland and having some dinner together or parts around when you're traveling, I'm traveling on the phone, wherever it might be, is that you're a big reader. Mm -hmm. Love, I love that. I'm always interested in what other people are reading. And if you're tuning in live today for at the table, if you're a reader also would love to have you put in the chat a good book or two that you really like, if there's a website you really like going to, something that has helped you. Readers definitely connect better because when we read, we have an automatic topic we can talk about. We, we can find some common ground, which is so important. Debbie, have you, first of all, have you always been a big reader? I am not. It's not been something that excited me, but I think in the last probably three to five years, it's something that I started pushing myself to either read a book or listen to a book on tape as I'm driving around. As you know, we have plenty of traffic here in D.C., so plenty of opportunity to listen to uh, books on tape. So it's always good. What inspired you to start listening to audio books? Um, I think, you know, for a, a you know, I really, I enjoyed when I started, started getting myself reading more books. I was like, Hey, I really enjoy this, but I also don't always have the time. Right. So, uh, it was easier with the audio books to be able to listen as I'm driving uh, to and fro, um, from various locations here in DC or up to the airport or something along those lines, even on the airplane. Uh, and then, you know, sometimes I'll, if I really love the book, I'll listen to it a, a couple times over again. So, uh, cause I always learn something new and something different or I get reminded, oh yeah, you kind of fell off the wagon there, get back on it. So <laughs> every book is a wagon, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Can be. How do you, how do you let yourself, I'm going to make a slight assumption here. I'm going to, I'm going to lead the witness. How do you let yourself off the hook, Debbie, so that you don't feel like you have to remember everything about a book or something you listen to or read? 
Um, you know, it's a great question because you can get overfilled with a lot of different ideas, right? But the, the the book I'm reading right now is called The One Thing. And it's really about what's that mm -hmm. one priority, what's that one thing in, you know, someday you want to accomplish and then breaking it back down into smaller goals to a five, a three, a one year goal, and then a monthly goal and a weekly goal and making sure that every day you're doing something towards your your one thing, right? What is that? And, and making sure we all block out the time. I know, you know, I just yesterday, uh, the last two days, I'll call it, and according to the book, the one thing that I was doing managerial things where I was just back to back conference call after conference call after conference call, right? How many of us aren't tired of, of those? <laughs> I'm seeing some nods here as we're filming this. <laughs> yeah, raise your hand, but raise all of them, your feet, everything. But, um, you know, if you really want to grow, you've got to also schedule in to, to, you know, I'm trying right now to get 30 to 30 minutes to maybe a, an hour of what's called flow. And that's just sitting and just writing, you know, what is that one thing I need to focus in on that will help me, help my team take us to that next level? What's that one thing that if I do it now, I, it'll, my life will be easier. Their lives will be easier. My, my, my partners and my, my customers' lives will be easier. So what, what is that one thing? If I do it now, I won't have, you know, it, it eliminates something else going forward. And, and so for us, it's been a real year of, uh, and probably for everybody else is, is hiring so many new people and getting restaffed. And, and now you know, you're all, we're almost there, but they don't really know what to do. So now it's training them and slowing down and getting that. So if we, we really focus in on this training over the next two months, while we get a chance to breathe a little bit during the holidays, before we go back under with all the business that's going to happen <laughs> next year, you know, we'll be better, we'll be better off for it, right? We'll, we'll, right. it'll be easy. And then right. you can focus in on the next one thing that we'll make. And it, it was interesting to talk about how a little tiny, if you take a domino and you just, I, I can't remember what the proportions are, but you start with a really small one and you build the next one in like 15% bigger or whatever. And you go down the line that that small one eventually tips over that eighth one. That's a huge one. And it's if you do those one little thing. Hmm. Then the next one, the next domino is, is, you know, even bigger and it knocks down another thing that's even bigger. And next thing you know, your life is, is simpler. Interesting. Wow. Tip I haven't achieved simpler now. yet, but I'm still working on the work in progress. Yeah. Well, we all are. We <laughs> all are. <laughs> Absolutely. I know my, when people ask me like, how are you doing? I'm like, fabulous, but I'll get better. People are like, wait a minute. What'd you just say? Like, yeah. Yes, we're working. And I say, I, I use the Canadian pronunciation of progress, which is progress. So it's all the same thing. <laughs> Indeed. I know that we, I, uh, we have the one thing book at home. Have you also read James Clear's Atomic Habits, which is about 1%, one percent, mm one? -hmm. Yes. Same, yeah. same principle, right? It's that one thing that each year, if you do it, you would be in five years from now. Wow. It's a magnitude, right? The compounding effect. Which nice. is the, the atomic habit. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the big domino. Now you've given me a great visual on that one. I like that. I'm a very visual person. I'm like, Oh, that's a big domino. I could just see them stacking. Yeah. It's like a Sesame street skit. So good. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, listening to you and hearing how you talk about flow, which is mm -hmm. fantastic. Um, there also seems to be, from what you shared, a growth flow, which is a different kind of flow. If you're getting people in, in literally into the stream, if we're going to use all kinds of like water and thermodynamic <laughs> yeah. examples, okay. you know, when we get in flow, there's there's different kinds of flow. And I, I don't know if that's talked about very much, uh, <laughs> but I'm listening like, oh, okay, yeah, the growth flow, because everybody who is coming to court now, if they're new, and even if they're returning, like life is different. You never step in the same river twice. One of my teachers used to say, I'm like, oh yeah, that's good. There's always water there, but the river's different. So yeah. that growth flow is a, a different mindset. Court, tell, uh, if you'd share, first of all, but I haven't given me any chance to share like what the heck is the background of your life and your, your career? What is, what is that? Who is lucky enough to have you on their team, Debbie? And uh, what is you, what is you in your specific wheelhouse? 
Wow, it's a long, it's a long story. We'll start with the short version since I've been here for uh, almost. I'm heading towards some somewhere in the high twenty range of uh, years here at at, uh, at court. But I've been on this side for about five years now, learning the event side of our uh, side of our business, which has been quite a quite a different animal than than our longer term rental side. So, uh, which is exciting and very dynamic, but. You know, for us, we, you know, it, it's been, I think for all of us, just been a year of, of rebuilding and, and growth with our own selves and our teams and getting everybody. Um, gosh, who knew this year was going to be as big as it was? So um, it's been quite a quite an interesting foray for me. I, you know, I started off with court on the accounting side of things and eventually went over the operational side and now oversee all of our uh, warehouses, 16 warehouses across the nation. So uh, if I've uh, messed up one of your deliveries, I apologize. And if I had a great one, please call me and tell me how great it was. Okay. <laughs> Everybody here is like, oh, we get it, Debbie. Like, uh, yeah. so Welcome to real life. Well, yeah. and, and you literally with court furniture, you literally are dealing with tables all the time. I love yeah. that little connection. You're at the yeah. table. Debbie's yeah. I remember you sharing early on when I was learning a bit more about what your specific lane is, so to speak, with court furniture. And he said, think about it this way, Ginger. All you need to bring is your overnight bag and your toothbrush. We'll take care of the rest. Meaning, so explain what that means for people looking yeah. for furniture. So our, our other side, so we have several facets to our company and, and our other, our, the side that I spent most of my life in was our longer term rental and it's mostly residential and office. So if you're relocating or maybe you're coming to town for three months for a project or something like that, you, instead of staying at a hotel, you might get an apartment somewhere or you're relocating to or from a, another country. You know, all you really have to do is bring your clothes. We're going to provide the, the, the we can provide the silverware, the plates, the, the bedding, the linens, the towels, all of that, all your, all your furniture you need, lamps, all of that, TVs, electronics, all those things. All you got to do is, you know, come with your toothbrush and your, your clothes and, and move in and it'll all be set up and ready for you to walk into just like a hotel. So uh, that's, that's part of what we do. And we have 75 partners that we can relocate you to or from 85 different countries across the world. Wow. So yeah. I think we need to take a tour on the road. Yeah, me too. I mean, too. <laughs> get back. Now, now's a great time. Where's it warm? <laughs> I'm going to go where it's warm. You might be go where you can go okay. ski. I'm going to go where it's warm. Okay. It's warm by the fireplace in the lodge. That's yeah, true. Very okay. true. <laughs> I can ski the sand wherever you want to go. That's true. That's true. <laughs> or the water. <laughs> Outstanding. You have a pretty darn remarkable team too. We've done at least one workshop together with some of your um, leadership team. Yes. And with 16 uh, warehouses, correct? Yes. There, there's some pretty critical connection that needs to be in place, that needs to be fostered, that needs to be developed, knowing that um, court, just like a lot of the um, companies and organizations within events and exhibitions and so forth, shows, trade shows, really, whoo, really hit a, uh, a low with the pandemic mm -hmm. and you're, you're coming back out of it, but that that connection. I mean, you didn't stop. You didn't stop. I remember talking early in early days of that. And I, you were sharing what was going on, like, wow. Okay. Well we keep going, but overall, even with business running along as regular, whatever that is, you've got a lot of people to keep connected. You've got a lot of communication. What are some of the ways Debbie that, you know, work well, and that you're always thinking about to help new team members, for example, and existing team members, how do you help foster the connection within a company that is very widespread? That's a big question, but what are some of the, what are some of the pieces of what you do to help connection live and thrive? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I'm not sure that uh, I would say I've, I've mastered that answer, but I think that the things that I found that, that work for me and for us is um 
you know, one is, is if we can get out and, and do a physical visit and be there live with them and kind of walk through, ask questions, look at things, talk through um, situations. I think it's very beneficial. We've been walking, I've been out a lot of the shows, walking the floor with my team and talking about quality and the processes and things like that. Um, but it, I think the other piece is whether you're there physically or whether it's from far away, it, it's really getting better at from my end for me at least is to ask the right question Ooh. what is that right question that'll help that person think differently or find their own answer right because because people learn better when they figure it out themselves and sometimes we forget it and and sometimes we get in a hurry and and we just start dictating right well you know go do this go do that um so it isn't, it's important that we all figure out what's a really, you know, as you're listening to people and talking about things, instead of telling them the answer, ask the question that helps them find the answer within. And, and that's sometimes very hard for me because I'm, you know, I'm a, let's, let's get it done and move forward and get out of here and move on. You know, it's the only <laughs> thing. And check that one off and put it off the task list and move on to the next one, right? And it's so that, Dern and I need to slow down and, and ask questions and, and listen to the answer and make that whole connection, right? And, and that is an area that I, I need to work at every day because it's not something that's just natural to me. Mm. And you do work at it. I know that curiosity is yes. one area that you've really been digging into. In fact, I think you've been, you did some reading on it, mm -hmm. correct? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yeah, it's been, it was quite an interesting journey I took. I, for whatever reason, dug into the, the whole curiosity thing. And, and it's quite interesting how um, it just creates a lot of dopamine in our brains, which is what we all want, right? We live off of that dopamine that drives us and pushes us forward. And so the more times we're curious and we, we look at things from a different angle or we do something different, even if it's taking a different route home, um, or different route to get to you. I, I don't know that I could take a different route to get to my office in my home, but I could certainly take a different route from, you know, my when I'm driving into the office or to the airport than I did before. But it's just being curious and, and asking those questions. And that's what, you know, you teach me a lot about connections is I got to, you know, I got to be curious when I'm going up to meet that person. I want to be curious and I want to ask all those questions so I can be a better be better connected and, and learn more about that person so um, those are you know it, it just it amazes me how much curiosity fuels us to the next thing and the next thing and it helps us grow too right because then we learn so much more because we think we know something about somebody and then till we figure out we don't because we ask the right question right there's always there's so so much going on with everybody right oh yeah, that's great. I like curiosity as fuel. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, when we are when we're curious too, we are focused on the curiosity. We're not bringing in other things. Or we're we're keeping other things out. So we're not judging. We're not uh, positing a response. We're like, oh, I really want to know this thing, mm -hmm. and and that can really drive us forward. Did you? Um, I think your team has had the benefit of your interest and curiosity too, if I recall correctly. Is that right, Debbie? Yes. Yeah. I, I was uh, able to put together about a 45 minute kind of WebEx on it, webinar on it. Okay. And who did that go out to within your organization? Um, it was open to our whole company. So, you know, however many employees are at court, whoever wanted to tune in and listen into it, uh, you know, listened in, it was some great feedback and some great conversation and side notes about it. So it was very, very interesting. Yeah. And that, when did you share that? Uh, it's been probably about a year now that, that, uh, since I did that. Maybe it'd be good to re-release it. Share I it know. Again. Might need to go out. Yeah. And find it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Being, being curious, being hyper curious, as I like to teach it, um, being so curious that that's what you're focused on. And there it's, it's like the little kid. It's the, it's the toddler. Oh, speaking of <laughs> there's, there's always so much joy and curiosity. If we let mm -hmm. ourselves just fully get into that curious zone, whatever we want, we think the outcome to be, um, or that we want an outcome of some sorts, that curiosity is such magical 
it's such a magical connection because when you're curious, other people get curious too. Like, oh, like what if? Oh, how about? And then what if we do this? And it it's kind of like chain humor. It can it can take off for everybody's benefit. I I appreciated Debbie that you yeah. shared so freely of you know, it's easy to direct. We get into that directorial role when asking questions is actually better in both the short and the long term because we let the person know we want to connect with them. We don't have to say, Island, I have a question with you, so I'm going to connect. No, no, we can simply say, hmm, tell me about this or what about that? That creates its own connection. That's that's magnetic too, by the way. People love curious people. <laughs> so good for you, good for court, good for everybody you serve. You have a very broad reach with your large, healthy company, what are some of the really, well, I don't like absolute questions, but when you think about some of the unique connection experiences you've had over the years, Debbie, uh, whether, whether for court or personal or volunteering, whatever that might be sports, I know you're a big sports fan. Um, what are, what comes to mind when you think, oh, there was that time where I met this person, it was completely unanticipated and so forth. Can you think of something, a, a connection where it stands out because it was unique or unanticipated? Hmm, unique or unanticipated. I'm trying to think through through that, through what, what that, that might question. <laughs> right oh, I'm like, hmm, I thought I know I needed to study for this uh, for this uh, exam here today. Um, I'm gonna try to think about something unique and, and unanticipated. Um, you know, I I don't think I'm I'm gonna share my story, but I'm gonna share a story my my cousin has. Um, and um, he he's working us you know a store and this guy keeps coming in and he's got his his hat on and different things and he and um my cousin's a big Orioles baseball fan and you know long history of them all that stuff and he keeps talking to Orioles with this this one customer and stuff and stuff and stuff, and, stuff. and you know find out they're both big Oriole fans and so so eventually he like says oh you know the guy's gonna come in today I'm gonna bring in my my base my Orioles card collect so he brings it in he starts talking to the guy he finds out he's the famous third baseman brooks robinson from the orioles the guy says, well, you want a picture with me you want me to sign my card and the guy's like what do you mean my cousin's like what do you, mean you want me to sign you want to sign my card he's like well, he takes his hat off he's like oh my god i've been talking to you this whole time so you know just by being curious with people and finding out what they're interested in and, and having those types of conversations and it's just happened in the last like six months so you never know who you're going to run into, right? Somebody that you're a big fan of that you don't even know, and you're having the that whole how long of a connection and conversation, and all of a sudden you find out this is somebody you admire and and uh, you know have watched play as a kid. So, right, right. Cool Next thing you know, he's going to be at the table. Like, why there not you. invite this there person you. over? That's how what? friendship starts too. And I, I'm always amazed how many people would take something like that experience with your, with your family. And then, well, it's going to sound harsh, but to me, like what, what, what's possible next? Like it doesn't have to stop there. It can, it can keep going. That's where friendships are built. That's where alliances are built. That's where everything from business and spouses and all kinds of things happen in really yeah. I, I, I don't like to use the word expected in some form. So I'd say unanticipated, like, oh, we can't, we're not going to, like your, uh, you said it was your brother, right? Your cousin. Your cousin, cousin. Your, your cousin, your cousin anticipated that this person was going to come in. However, they didn't anticipate that this person was actually in their card collection. Exactly. <laughs> That's so neat. You know, have him over. Why not? Yeah. People are hungry hungry for connection. That's why the table is such a great place and such a great metaphor. And you're in the table business. I love that. I love that. Love that. So, um, do, do you know if he's run into any more of his Orioles? <laughs> uh, I don't think he has, but that one was, you know, that one took him took him by surprise. So <laughs> that's neat. I mean, that could just, that could just lead anywhere, right? Yes. It, you take the saying, you never know. And you flip it around and say, you always know. There's something 
about the connections we have that mm -hmm. can turn into, develop into with intention, with curiosity, with a willingness to say, huh, I'm interested in finding out more. So the curiosity is powerful. You've been loading us up. I'm taking notes today as we're going along, Debbie. And one, one uh, plate I set on the table is to ask you for three different ways that you connect. Now you've already shared a few. Mm -hmm. Number one is, is that when you are um, thinking about things, you do that, the one, the one idea, you know, what's the one thing I can do to make it easier for somebody else, move this thing along, whatever, you know, fill in that blank. Right. So that's, that's a great connection with yourself. You've shared the, just, you just shared the story with your cousin of being in that, well, there's always a opportunity, that mindset of positive objective and willing, which is one thing I teach the POW mindset, which is also in the canon of bringing that curiosity forward every day in some way, shape or form, and how it's yeah. actually physiologically healthy for mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. Scientists, y'all, however, dopamine's a good hormone. So that, that can fuel a better person. I mean, that's, that's kind of a big thing. And if I were to ask you for a third one to um, share, like what's, what's one way that you like to connect with people? Let's keep it really simple. What's one way you like to connect with people, whether you know them or you don't know them yet? Um, I was, I, well, I was thinking about a more so along, you know, my personal life at, at home. One of the things that's been really beneficial for me this year, and I kind of have lost track of doing it over the last, uh, physically doing it over the last few months. But at one point I was kind of taking a, a, a daily slash weekly kind of gratitude journal about what my wife brought to the table and how made me better or did things for, for us or the relationship or whatever else. And, and that's a great way to connect with people, right? Is to, to think about that, you know, what we have to be thankful for. We always look at what maybe people are missing rather than what they're bringing to the table. And, and, and sometimes slowing down and go on, you know, gosh, I, I really hate it when you snore, but gosh, I love all the other things, right? <laughs> <laughs> You know, when you don't wipe the sink down after you do the dishes. So, but I'm like, does it really matter? You know, look at all these other things to be grateful for. And yes. boy, it puts things in a perspective, right? You go, oh, okay, well, so who gives a crap about, you know, that, right? You know, let, let's, let's move on to what's more important, right? What, what's, what's being brought to the table and is, is that more, and sometimes it, as we have any relationship, whether it's personal or at work or even out driving, right? Gosh, no, we all know there's a lot of road rage out there and craziness, right? And sometimes we think that be, that that road, that extra 50 feet in front of us is ours, right? And <laughs> why are you cut me off like that, you know? Just, just, just relax. You know, I, I think it reminds me of another little book. It's a free one. It's, it's written by um, Dan Sullivan and he gives away all of his stuff and he's a great uh, strategic coach um, called Your Your Mind, Your Property, right? And, mm. and it's really about, or your attention, I'm sorry, your attention, your property is what are you paying attention to? Are you paying attention to all the things people are doing wrong? Mm. Are you paying attention to all the things people are doing right? And who are you allowing to steal your attention, right? Somebody calling you to sell you a timeshare. Come on down here. We'll give you, a, you know, five days, four nights, you know, blah, blah, blah. If you just come and listen to us for two hours to try to sell you on a, you know, who, who are you giving your attention to? And it kind of goes back to being in flow and what's that one thing. So who are we giving our attention to? And is it these 800 meetings or is it, should it be more that one thing that if I could just do that one thing, it would then make this easier for me and unnecessary, maybe, maybe something else in my life unnecessary to have to do. Like, you know, if I got my whole team trained, I'd probably find my calendar more free because I wouldn't have these necessary meetings with my partners to talk about how we're going to get our team up to speed. And <laughs> so that the domino is, I'm looking for that domino to start to fall here shortly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. It's, that's so good. I, uh, yeah, your mind, your property, it go, you go from what's missing to what matters. Right. Yeah. It's a fantastic mindset. Now that's really simple, which is wonderful and elegant. Yeah. And it takes muscle and intention to bring that yes. to life. 
which is interesting because Dan Sullivan, you know, said even myself, he goes, I've been trying. He goes, I, I might, I might be able to really focus on my mind and exactly what I'm doing for about five minutes. And then after that five minutes, I find my mind, you know, wandering off in different directions. But at that five minutes, I gain so much energy and rejuvenation from it that, you know, it really helps me stay, you know, stay focused and, and accomplish more during the day and, and maybe do whatever that task is in front of me better because with intention rather than just oh god i gotta go do whatever it is right so um oh. so it's, it's it's interesting how he just do that and I, I know i've been trying to apply it to things like i'm like oh god i gotta go write this up oh i don't want to do it well just change your mindset go back to okay it's all right we got this this is you know and then you kind of i spend 30 minutes or so just blowing out everything out of my head and then I can stop and then organize and I can, you know, create that, that message that we need to create. Yeah. Yeah. Get out of the gattas and get to the get to. Speaking of flow, I just, I'd be remiss. I feel like I'd be remiss if I didn't say that, you know, it's not just about being in a flow about what's that one thing you want to accomplish, but it, it's also about making sure you have a recovery flow. Mm. What are you going to do to rejuvenate yourself your mind your body your soul we, we, you know i feel like over the last six weeks we've been going you know 24 7 as a as a company and as a division and and, and and i think a fair amount of people probably feel that way but you know it really is important that you, you step away and plan that time where you're not a slave to your phone or your computer or whatever else and you you disconnect whether it's you know, whatever it is that, that rejuvenates you whether it's go sit and read a book go take a long walk go you know, whatever it is, you, you, we've all got to find that one rejuvenation flow thing that allows us to just relax and enjoy and just, you know, be yeah. able to, you know, refresh or let our, let our mind kind of, let our mind just have a little relaxing moment because we'll, we'll be better in the long run because we'll have fresher ideas and, and better, you know, processes. Yes. The, so. Yeah. Thank you. That was a tremendously valuable, um, thought and we don't think about recovery we don't think about the kindness to ourselves, so that our body can do the work that our mind says it wants and sometimes do you sometimes find Debbie when you're in that recovery flow is that a good reflection point for you and do you sometimes then to something you said earlier do you sometimes think well that's not really necessary and I I don't need to do that thing now that I'm giving myself a pause to think about it yeah, I mean, I don't even, I mean, there, there's two parts that I think the recovery one is just, you know, for me, maybe going out and, and using Dan Sullivan's being present, right? And, and so when I go take my walk in the neighborhood, it's, it's watch, well, there's no more leaves to watch change colors anymore. They're all down on the ground. So, and it, but, but, you know, it's kind of just observing the birds or whatever else is around me, right? And, and, and yeah. just being, you know, present about all of those things. Um, to give my mind just time to relax and go, gosh, I don't have to really be thinking and churning and burning, you know, on, on things. And then, you know, sometimes I find just taking that walk and starting to just like talk into my phone, you know, set up a, an email to myself. And I, you know, instead of sitting and flowing on a piece of paper, I'll just sit and talk into my phone and capture my ideas. So and that I can kind of then from doing that, I go, okay, you know what? I don't, it's not, it's not, what I need to do is who needs to do it, right? This is what needs to get done. But am I the person that has to do it or is that somebody else's job? And sometimes I get into, and I think, um, you know, I think some of us just take on more burdens than we need to have, right? And so, you know, are we really that right person and do we really need to do that? And But, but if not, then, you know, it's not to say, you know, it's who needs to do it, not you know, not, you know, so who do we hand that off to? Can we hand that off to someone else to take care of or, or let somebody else worry about that? So, cause I don't, I don't need to, or I don't have to. So if we have that one, one, here's my one goal. Do I really need to worry about X or Y? Right. And, and maybe some of these 70 emails that I still haven't gotten to yet, maybe 30 of them don't need me to get to them at all. I, you right. know, I'm good at it. <laughs> yes. Delete key is your friend. Yeah, I'm with you. 
Oh, Debbie, so much, so much wisdom you're dropping down. Uh, I love this. I appreciate how mindful you are about your life and how you know that like, it's, oh, it, it's an ongoing project. It, 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 you don't stop. It's not like, oh, now I'm mindful. Now I can quit thinking about that. No, actually. <laughs> then it's the maintenance phase. Then it's the, how do I stay good to myself? How do I keep listening to the birds? How do I let it go so I can get into flow? You're observing, you're absorbing, you're thinking and so forth. And those are huge self-connection points. Um, so I appreciate everything you shared as we are round in the bend here today for the at the table episode it always goes so fast. Yeah. Uh, I have uh, my, my wrap up question is one that is quite self-serving um, and hopefully it's self-serving for you too. If you were to invite one or a few people, some people are like, look, I, can I, I only get to pick one. I'm like, yeah, you know, it's your table. Go ahead. If you were to pick one between one and three ish people to join you at the table who are alive now, whether you know them or not. None of this posthumous stuff. I don't have those kinds of superpowers. Mm. Uh, who would you who would you want to have at your table, Debbie? Yeah, it's a great, it's a great question. Um, I think that um it would probably be a couple different people. I think that one would be um, Vivian Stringer, who okay. is a women's basketball coach uh, from when I was a kid. She was probably early on in her career, soon there on in her career. But just understanding all that she lived through and went through and helped in pushing women's and basketball, women's basketball forward. Um, is would be a great conversation to have um, just to, to kind of understand that and and how to uh, create change because obviously she has and, and do, has done so in in the world of basketball so that would be one um, and then I'd probably be remiss if you know for me you know it would be really curious to just sit and and um, pick Michelle Obama's brain on you know just the whole you know, first time in the White House and just all of that, just the, the magnitude and how to handle that mm -hmm. type of, of pressure. I mean, just a, this huge amount of pressure um, that they were under and microscope and, and gosh, I, you know, I've always said, you know, I, I want to do famous things, but I don't want to be famous because I don't want everybody, my life, I don't want you to, I'm on a pretty <laughs> walk start to examine everything I do. I mean, who wants to be a politician these days? I mean, my gosh, they go into some, and especially nowadays, I mean, these kids are posting stuff on, you know, and like, that's going to, it's going to bite you someday. I mean, it's going to come back and you're not going to be happy. You shared it, but you know, like I said, thank God there weren't videos when I was a kid. That's all <laughs> we, just had, we had the yearbook, right? And like, oh, if I was yeah. good all in the pictures, so be it. <laughs> so. Um, so I mean, those would be the two people that I think would be really great to have sit down and have a good conversation with and understand more about, you know, what, what they went through and then learn from them on how to handle things with grace. Standing. Well, I'm going to see what I can do to make that happen. So oh, okay. great. Yes, indeed. Indeed. And you know, we're only, we're just a couple degrees of separation for everybody and really a couple of degrees of connection. We're going to coin that today. <laughs> Debbie Rohrbaut from Court Furniture Trade Show, extraordinaire, wonderful person. Thank you so much for making time to be at the table. I can't wait till we're at the same table again in person soon. Me too, me too. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thanks everybody for being here. Appreciate everybody's yes. help. Yes, for all of you who are here live, thank you so much for making time to be at the table. You got busy lives, like thanks for joining us. Yeah, Those of you after. Yeah, go ahead and share the episodes with somebody who needs to hear this good message today. And until we're together at the table, take good care and remember that life is powered by connection.